Good morning, everyone. How are you guys doing? Thanks for being here. Uh, it's a lot of Asian people on a Sunday morning. It's not even church, so, so thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, now that I've thoroughly offended you, let me tell you a little bit about my film. Uh, it is called The Real Mikado. Um, it is a feature-length comedy uh, about an out-of-work actress in New York who runs out of money and she has to move back in with her parents in the suburbs of Detroit. And the city council in her hometown wants to shut down the community theater. So she agrees to direct a production of Gilbert and Sullivan's opera, The Mikado, to try and save it. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, The Mikado is an opera. It first premiered, uh, I think, in 1885. It's set in Japan uh, and it was almost always performed by actors who are decidedly not Japanese. Okay. Uh, so I've already shot the first 10 minutes of the film. Uh, we're shooting the rest of it this summer. Um, so uh, let me just give you a little, little, little taste of what you're in for. Hey, so when can I see you again? Freeze! Get my Get down! Open it. Here's your evidence. Something tells me we just gave these girls a happy ending. Cut, cut, cut. Cut it. Was those fantastic? Can we just get you to scream a little more in Asian? That's fine. We've seen all that we need to. The 10 minutes that we shot are uh, sort of her life in New York, and uh, she finally has had an app, and then she has to move back home. Um, so she is what some people have been calling a boomeranger, uh, which is the child of a baby boomer who has to move back in with her parents. Uh, <laughs> so it's a pretty, yeah, yeah, we've all, I don't know, we've all been there, but some of us have. Uh, it's a pretty common one these days. The, the economy's flailing. And uh, I see this as a kind of coming of age comedy for a generation that's trying to grow up after they have to go back home again. Um, okay, so the journey. Uh, I was an actress, I am an actress. Uh, you just don't get a lot of work when you look like me, uh, being an Asian American person. Uh, and the fantasy always, even if you're an actor of any kind, is that some brilliant director will see you walking down the street and say, you, I want you for my next film. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very passive life um, and indeed, Sophie, the protagonist, she starts out the film being a kind of self-defeating, insecure actress, waiting to be discovered, hoping that someone will find her and give her a chance. And throughout the course of the film, she, she finally takes charge of something, and she becomes part of a community, and she's finally in control of her own destiny. And I think that's the American dream. Okay, so the world. Uh, I actually did grow up outside of Detroit. Um, and in fact, uh, uh, Lewis, one of the producers on A Solar Champion, or the producer, he had a layover in Detroit before he came here. And uh, he saw this newspaper. So welcome to Detroit, the most miserable city in America. Uh, <laughs> I, people in Detroit are going to kill me if you take a picture of this. So uh, the, uh, the people there, it's, it's, it's an amazing place because uh, it was the site of sort of the, the, what's great about America, this ingenuity, this you know, what can be done. And to me, it still represents what may be. Um, and the suburbs, strangely, outside of these abandoned factories are, are sort of, have, are full of manicured lawns and, and country clubs. And there's still this sort of lingering feeling of uh, this bygone era of America, this thing that, that we all strive for. So this is some visual references uh, that I have for the, for the film. Okay, so what do I want to make this thing? Uh, growing up, I loved movies, especially movies from the golden age of Hollywood. Um, I, I, I wanted to be one of these women. They were glamorous and beautiful, but I looked like this. 
<laughs> uh, and there just weren't, there weren't opportunities for someone to look like me. And even when I went to be an actress in New York, I, I was never going to be Grace Kelly or Vivian Lee or Audrey Hepburn or Kate Winslet or Keira Knightley because producers and, and directors had a hard time seeing someone who looked like me as a protagonist in her own story. They couldn't see me and see anything, you know, but a stereotype or someone's, you know, best friend or some kind of ethnic sidekick. Uh, this is where I grew up. This is this is the people around me, and I think when you grow around, grow up around people who don't look like you, and there's no one who looks like you on screen, you start to develop this idea that you're not beautiful, you're not valuable, your story is not important. Um, I have a. <laughs> I have a really good friend who works at CAA, one of the, the most powerful talent agencies um, in the world. And I told him, I want to make not just a niche Asian American film, but a, a film that, that is a great American independent film. And he said, oh good, that's really smart. Because if you cast an Asian American person, that would be stupid. <laughs> and he thought he was being helpful in his mind uh, it, it would be stupid, and he's going on his own experiences as a Hollywood agent. But the problem with going on your own experiences is that you never open yourself up to anything new. That you never see what's possible, because you're only going on what you've seen before, and we get the same old thing over and over again. Uh, so, we're planning on, on shooting it this summer, submitting it to festivals, hoping to get distribution. If not, we're going to just take it around ourselves. Um, and we're hoping to partner with community theater groups. Uh, there are a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan fans out there, and it would be fun to, to have them do a little performance before, before each screening. Um, I don't want, if I ever have a family one day and I have kids, I don't want them to grow up in a world where they don't think that they matter because they don't see anyone like them. Um, and the ultimate goal is, okay, so that's my movie. <laughs> I saw the time, I got nervous, sorry. Uh, but I hope you guys will support the campaign and continue making your own films and supporting, supporting your own. Thank you. Thank you, Joyce. Thank you. I was supposed to finish strong, but I got nervous when I saw him hold up the sign that said time. So don't hold it against me. Leanne, why don't we start with you? I feel you, girl. <laughs> Grew up in Chicago in the 70s. Yeah. Felt very marginalized. Now ended up running an Asian film festival. High so. five, lady. Okay. That's what happened, she you know? <laughs> um, <laughs> congratulations, by the way, on being named IndieWire's Project of the Week. I saw Thank that you. in your uh, social media. Thank you. Thank you. You have a very great personality, and in terms of your pitch, you're so comfortable and you're funny, and so that always helps, right? To have that that just comfort level and and that humor. Um, so. I, I will say this, I feel like this story might be kind of, uh, we've seen the story before on the Asian American circuit, mm -hmm. so it might be more fresher for non-Asians, this particular story. Mm -hmm. um, and also there is another film that came out maybe five, six years ago by Chil Kong um, called The Mikado Project, and it's also out on Amazon. So I just wonder if you need to change the name because it might, because that, when I saw that, I'm like, oh, did they revive this, mm -hmm. you know? So I just wanted you to be careful because yeah. mm -hmm. people might yeah. confuse the two, mm -hmm. even though they're two very, very different stories. Mm -hmm. Um, the last piece I'll say is I'm, uh, I, I wanted to hear a little bit more. There's a lot of different themes in here, like um, being an Asian woman in Hollywood or is it being a woman in Hollywood, which was really your pitch in Kickstarter. It's mm -hmm. like, we need more female leads. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that case has already been made, mm -hmm. so I need something a little bit more compelling than that. Okay. Um, or that whole trend of boomeranging. I think there's something to that because that is a huge trend. Mm -hmm. So is it boomeranging? Is it revitalizing the city of Detroit? You know, I think that could be very exciting. Mm -hmm. So I'm just kind of throwing yeah. those things out. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, I, I love this and, and I think it's, I'm really excited to see it come to life. Um, uh, I think that, I mean, my, my, my one point that I want to raise is there's, there's so much potential with this beyond just kind of like a personal reflection kind mm -hmm. of story or people reflecting on how they fit into society. I think there is real potential in kind of using a story like this to challenge dominant media, really kind of prompt some very important conversations that aren't happening mm -hmm. around you know, what is going on in our media. And I would love to hear more about kind of where you, what you'd like to see come about as a result sure. of this story. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, um, it, it, I'm excited to, to see this made. Um, and I, I felt there was something that what resonated the most with me was this idea of the reinvention of a city. Mm. Um, I, you know, I, I used to cover Detroit, so I get it. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's, but it's going through, it's going through mm -hmm. a revitalization right now. And there's this kind of parallel story of the revitalization of a character. Yeah. And as they go back and this kind of emerging. And yeah. I didn't see any of that okay. really come through in yeah. the, the pitch. Um, and so, you know, I would think through broadening out the story for a broader audience okay. through that yeah. aspect um, and not making it very uh, super focused. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is the, the trailer you showed did not show anything about the larger story. Yeah, because we, uh, we haven't shot we haven't shot it. Yeah. <laughs> but if you donate to my campaign, maybe we will. <laughs> no, we will. Um, <laughs> And so, um, and I, I, I'd be interested in seeing a little bit more th um, thinking around how the story is going to actually, the community engagement yeah. aspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's but the, the theater part is interesting. Um, but, and then for a non-theater person, like, I just wanted to know more about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fair. Okay, so um, I had no idea that this other film existed until after I had done a lot of work on the script, this, um, the Mikado project. Um, it was one of those things where I was looking, she, I wanted her to, to go home. They wanted to shut down the, the, the library in my hometown because uh, this woman, the mayor, was like a tea party person and they wanted to shut down the public library. And the town sort of banded together and uh, they decided to, to save it. And it didn't make sense for an actress to go back and try and save a library. It had to be a theater. And then I thought about what plays were in the public domain that they could do and, and this seemed like a perfect kind of but maybe from a branding standpoint, maybe the title is confusing. Uh, for me, my goal is it, is for this just to be a, a satisfying, uh, you know, you, we talk about issues of identity, and when you see it, you'll, you, you'll, you'll feel these things, but it's more about this one girl's story and her, and her kind of journey. Like, why do we all, wa I mean, why do so many of us watch girls? Why do we care about a woman, a young woman trying to find herself in her 20s? Because she's white. I, I mean, why should we all, you know, the, the, this should be a relatable protagonist that, that we all identify with. And so the goal is basically to make an, an indie film that happens to have an Asian American lead. And I think that's, um, that's a tough thing. I think we're all striving to do that, to break through, to sort of be accepted in the, in the mainstream and for people to see us as complex human beings as we are and three-dimensional than, than the sort of stereotypes that we, we're seeing reflected in mainstream films. And we have time for a, a couple of comments or questions from people in the audience for the real, the real Mikado. Mm -hmm. Any questions about the production, about the, the narrative there? And, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I've done seven drafts of the screenplay. Um, but I'm, I'm thinking of tweaking it because, it, depending on the budget, I may have to work with a lot of non-actors in Detroit, and that's actually really exciting to me. So I think that um, I might try and, and work with them, and I'm, the script may still change depending on, on who I end up casting and, and how I work with them. But um, I'm planning on shooting in Detroit using a lot of local actors. Yeah. Great. Joyce, thank you so much. Thank you.